Hey everyone, and welcome back. In today's video, we're going to talk about a problem that's existed since 2008 on Harley-Davidson's, and it's a problem I'm sure either you have experienced on fly-by-wire applications, or you know someone that has. Limp mode. Essentially, it's when you roll back the throttle and suddenly you find the bike won't go over 16, 1700 RPM and you have to limp it off the road to get somewhere safe. We're going to go through exactly how the fly-by-wire system works, the safety features involved with it, and give you some tips and tricks on how to diagnose that problem. So, stick with us. Fly-by-wire systems have been around since 2008 on FL models and it's pretty much become the standard. The limp mode thing can be incredibly aggravating and confusing. So let's help you better understand why the bike has a limp mode to begin with. It's a safety feature. It's really not a, at, at all unlike how cable drive systems work. So regardless if it's carbureted or cable drive fuel injected, the system works exactly the same way in that you have two cables. You have two cables because it's a built-in safety feature. One is your throttle cable, the other is the idle cable. The purpose of the idle cable is if the, you know, the throttle ever stuck or the spring broke or something like that, you can force the throttle forward and the idle cable would close the butterfly to bring the power back down pretty simple and how that works. Now fly-by-wire works exactly the same way. In the cable format, as you can imagine, when the throttle is completely closed and you're in an idle position, the throttle cable itself is short. The idle cable is long. As you roll the throttle open, they are equally changing the cable in length. It's a balance. They're in a series. Okay? Electronic throttle works exactly the same way. Now when you go into limp mode, what's happening is there's what's called a correlation error most of the time. There are two circuits that operate through the throttle body and the twist grip, and we'll go into detail in a minute here on each individual component. That system works in a series as well, but it's based on voltages instead of cables. You have one side that's called a rising voltage and you have another side that's called a falling voltage. Again, it's in a series. Remember the cable, okay? The rising voltage and the falling voltage both work in a range of zero to five volts. Where the correlation error comes in and where you go into limp mode is when the total voltage between those two circuits do not equal five volts. So for example, on your rising voltage, as you roll the throttle back, just like on a throttle cable, as you roll the throttle back, it goes from zero to five volts. At the same time, the falling voltage goes from five to zero volts. And at any given time, regardless of your throttle position, that rise and falling voltage always has to equal five volts. So at 50% throttle, your rising voltage would be at two and a half volts, your falling voltage would be at two and a half volts. When they don't total five, that pings the ECM that there is a wiring problem. When it does that, the bike automatically goes into limp mode. Now there are several other things that can cause limp mode. It could be defects in the twist grip sensor, which you know is located inside the handlebars. It can also be a problem inside the throttle body. It can be a wiring issue. Uh, it can be a an ECM issue, there's several different things that can cause the problem, but most of the time it's that correlation error that causes the limp mode. Now if we re rewind back to 2008, there were quite a few throttle bodies that were replaced uh, under warranty because of limp mode issues. Somewhere around late 2008-2009, Harley-Davidson realized that they had a problem with corrosion on the terminals located either at the throttle body itself or at the ECM. So instead of replacing throttle bodies, they did a recall and asked people to replace the terminal connectors at the ECM and they became gold-plated terminals to help prevent corrosion. Now this creates a potential issue as well 
that had nothing to do with the terminals or wiring error that could also have caused a correlation problem. Okay, let's take a look at the size of the terminals that are inside your ECM. They are incredibly small, as you can see. Now, when Harley moved the ECM to the top of the battery, that almost created the need to have to disconnect the ECM when you change a battery. Now, that's not how I would recommend doing it. I would lay a cloth on the side of the bag, to, or the side of the, the side cover on the side of the bike to protect it from scratches, and then you would lift the ECM up without disconnecting it. The reason is because, this, again, this is a very, very small terminal. These terminals are only designed to be disconnected and reconnected a handful of times. So repeatedly disconnecting and reconnecting that ECM can actually stretch these terminals out and create connection problems. So that's one factor there. The other issue has to do with how the wires come up and into the throttle body. It's a very tight bend there. So if there's any type of break in that wire, it can produce a correlation error and create the limp mode condition. Another problem can be handlebar wiring. Again, remember this is a safety feature. So if there were a short, potentially, with the rising voltage line or one of the lines in between the twist grip sensor through the handlebars, then it would prevent there from being a potential wide open throttle scenario should one of the wires short against the handlebars. Again, limp mode, safety feature. So it can also be an issue, again, inside the handlebars or how the wires are extended uh, and create a potential problem there. Now there's another un widely unknown issue that can occur inside a fly-by-wire throttle body that often people aren't familiar with. Now, of course, you are aware that in most fly-by-wire applications, uh, the common complaint is throttle lag. Okay, when you, it's not like a cable drive bike. When you wick the throttle, you can have immediate throttle response, and there seems to be a little bit of a delay on fly-by-wire motorcycles. Part of that is built into the throttle body, and it's a mechanical limitation that nothing can be done about. Now, one of the advantages of fly-by-wire is the fact you can independently control the throttle plate relative to the twist grip position. And that can help with actual power and acceleration and torque output because you can improve port velocity in some cases by delaying the speed at which the throttle plate opens. This improves port velocity and, and flow. So that's a good aspect when it comes to tuning, but you still have that delay that creates confusion. But herein lies an issue that can be created that to a large degree is based on your riding habits. I call them throttle jockeys, blippers. Boop, 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 blipping the throttle on a fly-by-wire motorcycle can actually cause a problem within the throttle body and create even more of a delay that can be very difficult to diagnose. Let's have a look at the inside of a fly-by-wire throttle body. Now, this is out of a, you know, an, a, a twin cam, 08 and later. Uh, the M8 looks a little different, but how it works is basically the same. So what you have on the inside of the throttle body here, you have the motor, then you have an idler gear, and then you have this gear that is actually what opens and closes the throttle plate. Okay. Now, notice how much play there is in the gears, lash. Now, that's a considerable amount of backlash. A lot of the delay that you experience is because of that backlash that is designed to be there for a reason. As temperatures change, things grow and shapes change. So there needs to be some lash in those gears in order to prevent the throttle from binding. All right? So again, that's a safety aspect of fly-by-wire. Where the throttle blipping becomes an issue is you have most of this backlash with no tension on this gear here. So when you're blipping the throttle over and over, again, it creates an impact area in these first few teeth inside the throttle body. Also remember, you spend most of your time, you know, five to 10% throttle, give or take. So these first four or five teeth are getting most of the wear and most of the impact. But when you twick, wick that throttle and it slams back down, you get that effect. You can hear it. And over time, 
these teeth can actually break. When these teeth break, you have an extreme throttle lag that occurs down low. Unfortunately, you can't see this without taking the cover off, and the cover is what contains your throttle position sensor. Now that you know what can cause a limp mode condition on your motorcycle and what a correlation error is, let's review the different components. First, you start with the twist grip sensor that's located in the handlebars. You've got several wires that are going to go from there back to the ECM to give uh, feedback for your twist grip position. Then you have the wires that go from the ECM to the throttle body to tell the motor on the throttle plate how far to open that. And then from there, you have the throttle position sensor that also provides feedback back to the ECM and along all the way that correlation of that zero to five volts on rising and falling has to match. It also has to match the throttle position sensor and if there's too much of a variance between the throttle position and the twist grip position then that can throw an error as well. Needless to say it's a pretty complex system. Diagnosing it can be pretty tough as well. There's a lot of wires in there. I can't really show you a wiring diagram because of copyright issues and such, but these wiring diagrams can be found online with Google searches or in a factory service manual. You have to check the circuits coming from the twist grip sensor to the ECM. Verify you have continuity from the harness there. You want to make sure there are no shorts in the handlebars. Then you have to make sure where that wiring harness comes around the neck and goes underneath the tank. You don't have any breaks in the wires there. So that can be checked relatively simple with a voltmeter. Checking on from the twist grip sensor at the handlebar to the wire connector at your ECM. You also have the condition with the stretched terminals that I mentioned. And then you have continuity in the wiring between the ECM and the throttle body. Then you have the continuity of the wires from the throttle body providing feedback back to the ECM. So one of the first steps in diagnosing a limp node condition is just to make sure you have continuity between all those connections and those wires. If in fact you do have continuity, you could move forward from a wiring issue. Often to eliminate the actual pin connectors at the terminals, you can eliminate that as a problem by disconnecting the ECM, pulling the terminal out from the connector, and maybe tightening that terminal up just a little bit with a pair of pliers, reconnecting it, see if the problem goes away. Or you could just simply replace the terminal on that connector. Once you've eliminated all of those possibilities, you can then check the output voltages from the twist grip sensor itself, and that will eliminate it. Then you also want to check the individual connections located at the throttle body uh, to make sure, again, those pins aren't stretched. Where the wire bends over at that connector is a stress point in the wire. The insulation can look perfectly fine, but you could have a wire broken inside of the insulation. So checking continuity from the plug and just a few inches back from that area is a good way to eliminate that as a potential problem as well. As far as checking the gears inside the throttle body, that does require you to pop the side cover off of the throttle body to inspect those gears. You want to be very careful when you do that. After you understand now how the system works, you also understand it is a very complex system at that and one that should not be taken lightly. The limp mode is a safety feature. The correlation is important. The throttle position is important. But I'll give you a little tech tip. If you find yourself on the side of the road with the limp mode activated on the bike, Quite often, simply unplugging the connector on the side of the throttle body and plugging it back in can be enough to reset the system and allow the bike to return to normal operating condition to at least get you where you need to go. Don't assume that it's fixed at that point. It can be difficult to duplicate this problem. So if when you take it to a shop, expect them to potentially have the bike for a while after they go through the general diagnostics that I mentioned. One of the toughest things about repairing a problem like this is duplicating it so you can then diagnose it. The second thing, when you change your battery or if you find yourself having to get in 
into your battery compartment, I would advise against disconnecting the ECM. Lay a rag down on your side cover there and just roll the ECM and the harness over to the side to reduce the possibility of stretching those terminals and creating additional problems down the road. So guys, thanks for watching. Hope this helps you understand fly-by-wire correlation errors and limp mode just a little bit better. A couple of things we got coming up this Saturday at 1 p.m. We go live with Brian Clock from Clockworks. We're going to He's going to show some great products that he's got here coming into the Christmas season. Uh, we're going to talk about his history in the motorcycle industry, how I know Brian. We're going to talk about his new family edition there, so we're really looking forward to that. And then in a few days, we're going to get we're going to pull back the curtain and talk with one of the the CEO of one of the largest aftermarket warranty companies in the industry. We're going to talk about details about factory warranties, extended warranties, and get down to the fine print of the whole thing. As part of that, I have an announcement about a very exciting new program that I've been working on for a very long time some of you may be interested in. If you hadn't hit the subscribe button or the like button and the little bell to let you know next time we do a video, I would appreciate you doing that now if you think I have earned your subscription. Guys, take care of yourselves and each other. Thanks a lot. Have a good one.